everyone. Uh, I will have a couple of videos about uh, transformers, but it is it will be more from the academic perspective. So it is more to help students uh, dealing with a transformer uh, as a concept in an e energy conversion course. I will try to add a little bit of practicality to it, but it is the it is more towards uh, the students. So this video, the the starting one, uh, will be basically just a very qualitative video will have some descriptive uh, analysis of the different parts of the transformers, including ideal transformer, real transformer, transformer model, open and short circuit. But without going into the details of how we do uh, a lot of calculations, but this is just an overview about the transformer as a circuit, as a model, and as, as testing. So to start with, in an ideal transformer, basically, we have three main components. We have the primary winding, we have the secondary winding, and we have the core that links the two. And as we know, transformers are used to either step up the voltage or step down the voltage. We need to step up the voltage when we transmit the power to reduce the current and hence reduce the losses. Now, as we are approaching the loads, we need to step down the voltage so we can utilize this power. So basically, you apply a voltage here at the primary side. Then once you have a voltage, you will have a current, then you will have a flux. So you will have a flux that is produced from the primary winding. Now, because we use here magnetic material, and the magnetic material has a very important uh, property, which is has very high permeability. So it allows the flux to go through without losing a lot of power. So we will have here the flux until it reaches the secondary winding. Okay, so if we have a voltage current, then we'll produce a flux. If we have a flux, then we will have a voltage. Okay, and it has to be time varying voltage that will produce a time varying flux. So if we apply DC, that doesn't work. Okay, so that's in a very simple way. Now, it depends on the number of turns, then we can either step the voltage or step up or step down the voltage the transformer symbol is like that okay and here is the primary voltage secondary voltage primary current and secondary current and in p and in s is basically the turns ratio the number of turns in the primary and the number of turns in the secondary and the most fundamental formula in transformer or ideal transformer that the primary voltage over the secondary voltage is equal to the number of turns in the primary divided the number of turns in the secondary, or we call it the turns ratio A. And this is a very important fundamental uh, formula for the transformer. So any transformer, that can be used to step up the voltage, can also be stepped down the voltage if we just reverse the, the connection. So that's an ideal transformer. Now let's go from this ideal transformer to real transformer. What is the, the difference? Now there are several differences. First of all, there will be losses in the line, and we'll talk about that in the coming slide. But more importantly that we said that we will have a flux produced in the primary. Not, not the whole flux that we produce here in the primary side, we reach the secondary because part of the flux will leak out as the flux, flux start to uh, go in the, in the core material, in the magnetic material. Not all of it will reach the secondary, part of it will leak. So keep this in mind, and with this simple understanding of the transformer circuit, let's go and develop the model. This is something very fundamental, very important to understand. And again, I will just give a very general view about the relationship between the transformer component and the model components. So let's start. So the transformer basically has two main components, the winding and and the core, okay? And we want to see these components in the winding and in the core, how I can transfer them 
into part of the model. So here is the model. There are some hidden places, as you can see, with boxes, and only we have the turns ratio that is having we have it from the ideal transformer. So we want to add components to the ideal transformer to have a model for the real transformer. So let's start with the winding. The winding is usually made from copper, mainly, sometimes from aluminum. So there is winding in both sides. There will be a current in the primary, a current in the secondary. Now this current will produce a losses. I square R loss. Then I have to have a resistance in the primary and a resistance in the secondary to represent that losses in the winding. So here we have the resistance in the primary and the resistance in the in the secondary. Second, as we mentioned in the previous slide, not all flux produced in the primary will make it into the secondary. So there will be leakage in both sides, from the primary side and from the secondary side. So a leakage is a flux. Now the flux, how we can represent the flux, a loss of a flux, is a loss of what? Reactive power. So the best way to represent a loss in the reactive power by having a coil, an inductor. So we will have an inductor in the primary and in the secondary that represent basically the leakage flux. Now let's move to the core. In the core, we have two components as shunt or as parallel. The first one is due to the losses, the real losses. So we have two types of losses in the transformer. The first one is we call it the ED current loss. And this is basically a resistive heating in the core. And this is because we have currents around, okay? And we will have a flux. Now this flux, it will also induce currents in the core. And because the core is made from silicon steel, so it's a conductive material, you will start some having some induced currents, we call them ED currents, that produce heating or power loss. Also in the core, we have another form of power loss. We call it a hysteresis loss. Now, what is the hysteresis loss? Now, the magnetic material is basically is made from dipole. So if we have, give a look here, just a microscopic look to the magnetic material, basically it's having dipoles, north and south, that they are randomly oriented. So a magnetic material, without applying any external voltage, it's not a magnet. If you bring a, silic silic uh, a silicon steel, it's not a magnet. Now, once you start to produce the voltage, you will start to align those dipoles, and then you will have a net magnetic flux, and you are transferring this into a magnetic material. Now, we apply AC. So, half the time that we have a positive cycle, and the other half we have a negative cycle. So basically, you will be aligning those dipoles in one in the positive in one direction, in the negative cycle in the other direction. And you will keep doing this. Now the energy that is lost for realignment of those dipoles is called the hysteresis loss. So now because those are both actually copper loss, sorry, they are both a real loss, we represent that as a resistance. So they are real loss in the core material. Finally, we have a flux that go through the magnetic material. And that flux is also can be considered as a reactive power or as an inductor. So that is the whole model or the these are the different components in the transformer model. This is for the primary winding which is this part these two are for the secondary winding which is this part and these shunt elements is basically the core is the core of the 
of the transformer. Now, this model will be simplified and we'll have uh, some videos in the future that will talk about how we can simplify this model. Now, how we can find these values, how we can find this resistance, inductance in the winding and in the core, we do for this two different tests. And these tests are done in the industry as well as in the labs, in university labs. They are basically the same, the same test. And again, I will go general view of those tests. With the future, uh, I will try to have some more quantitative analysis of these tests. So the first test, we call it the open circuit test. In the open circuit test, you apply to the one side of the windings, let's say the primary winding, and usually we apply the voltage to the low voltage side, okay, of the transformer. So if, if, if we have a transformer, let's say it is 11 kilovolt by 220 volts, so we go to the low voltage side and we apply the rated voltage. So here we'll have rated voltage applied. And the secondary will be open circuit and here's the name open circuit test so the current in this side in the secondary is equal to zero there is no current here so there is no losses here and the current that goes here is extremely small current so the losses in the winding both primary and secondary is very negligible but because we apply the rated voltage here and the core parameter are shunt elements you will have here the current in the core will be the rated current okay so i will have here the ic square rc this is my core loss okay so what we measure here we measure the current i we measure the voltage v we call it i open circuit V open circuit and the power, which is the power open circuit. So we assume that the power we measure is actually the power loss in the core. So from this test, we'll be able to find RC and XM using certain calculations. We will come to them in another video. But from this test, I can find the shunt element of the transformer model. The second test, we call it the short circuit test. Basically, we come here and short circuit one side of the transformer. Now, usually we short circuit the low voltage side of the transformer. So again, the same transformer, 11 kilovolt by 200 or 220 volt. I will go and short circuit this side and apply a voltage here. Now, what is the voltage I will apply? I will apply a voltage so that I will have the rated current going through the winding. So you'll have the maximum current. And usually to do that, because this is a short circuit, I don't need to, need to apply the whole voltage. I will apply a small fraction of the voltage. So in the short circuit test, it is the opposite. I will have full current with a very, very little voltage. Having said that, it means that if the voltage is extremely small, the current that goes into the core or the flux is extremely small. So whatever I found in this test is more related to the winding, not the core. So the open circuit test will give me the parameters for the core. The short circuit test will give me the parameter of the, of the winding and it will give me the resistance of the winding and the inductance of the winding and the losses, we call it the B short circuit. Sometimes we call it the load losses, which are the losses in the in the transformer winding. So this is a general view about the transformer and wait for some other more detailed videos. We'll spend some time in each concept about the transformer.